Let's just lift our hearts and our hands to heaven and just give the Lord praise and continue to worship him. Lord, we exalt you today. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies that are new. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence filling this house, filling each one, filling each person in their home today. Wherever you're at, Lord, we thank you for the Holy Ghost just rising up big and touching each and every person. Lord, we magnify you. We exalt you. We glorify you today. Hallelujah. If you're here watching us right now, I want to encourage you. If you have sickness in your body, I want you to believe with us right now for the Spirit of God to touch you. I want you to lay your heart, hand on your heart or on your body somewhere. And I'm going to pray for you today. Maybe you're right there with your device. Just lay your hand on the device there as a point of contact. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak right now for sickness, disease to come off of the people. I speak for healing power to flow through right now through their flesh. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the anointing rising up within them. And I command every sickness, every disease, every infirmity off of them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare today that they are free. Say that with me. I am free. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. We'll give the Lord praise today. Glorify him. Thank him today. Hallelujah. Wherever you're at, give him praise. Give him thanks for what he's doing in our midst. Hallelujah. Amen. We're so thankful that you've joined us today. We're so glad that you have chosen to be a part with us. And, and we want to thank you and count it an honor and a privilege to be able to come into your home or wherever you're at right now to bring the Word of God and minister the, by the Spirit to you. And so I want to encourage you today, get ready because God is releasing some things on the earth. Today is a very special day. It's, one of the, it's the second most important time for the church because we celebrate the birth of the church on Pentecost. Pentecost is the day that we celebrate the birth of the church. And if you would, if you've got your Bible or your device there, turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, the Bible says right here, In verse 4, it says, As Jesus, being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You've heard of me. In other words, I promised that to you. For John truly baptized you with water, and, and and everything, but and with the holy and he said, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they therefore had come together, he asked of they asked of him, saying, Will you at this time restore to me again uh, unto us the kingdom of God? I want you to bow your head. Let's pray and ask the Lord right now to minister this to us. Brother Steve, why don't you bring that to me? Father, in Jesus' name, we, we release this. We release this in the name of Jesus. We thank you for touching the lives of people. Thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of God just to fall upon the hearts of people today. And we thank you for releasing this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Jesus had told them to wait in the, the uh, upper room and that they would receive the promise of the Father. Now, let's go on down here in verse 7. And Jesus said, it's not, he said right here, that it's not uh, for you to know what the seasons are according to the things that the Father has in his own power. But, in verse 8, he said, you shall receive power. Everybody say power with me. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me, unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost or the farthest edges of the part of the earth. 
And so I want you to see here something very powerful. Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit. Remember, over in John, it, uh, over in John chapter 7, Jesus uh, talked about in verse 38, he said that he that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he spoke this because the, uh, the Spirit had not uh, been given yet. He'd not been glorified. But Jesus was talking about that then in John. Today, we see here it was released. And I want you to see that 2,000 years ago, exactly 50 days after uh, the Passover, Pentecost comes and the Holy Ghost is released. And folks, I just want you to see something very powerful today, that Jesus promised the Spirit of God. And I want you to see here that as Jesus promised the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost came. Power came. Power came upon the church. And I want you to see today that God has given you power. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you have power. You have miracle working ability in you, and God gave that to the church. The church is not to be timid. The church is not to be uh, dug out, you know, in a foxhole, laying, laying low, but the church is to be full of power, and that's what we're celebrating today. Hallelujah. That's what we're celebrating today is the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Give him praise today. Just give him praise for the power of God being upon us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Pentecost has a very special meaning to me. This weekend, Pentecost weekend, 50 years ago, in a little Baptist church, I received the, the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And now some 50 years later, praying, speaking in the Holy Ghost, walking in the power of God. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if Pentecost it's not that it doesn't mean that much to us, but it means something special to me. Because the day that I received the Holy Ghost, my son received a miracle. He wasn't expected to live. He had, an, he had a, a, a malformity in his body, and he was only a little baby. But the night that I received the Holy Ghost, God filled me, and he said, I'll heal your son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to speak to you in your home right now. If you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you can be filled today just like the church was, just like in the early days. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. All you have to do is ask. The Bible says in Luke chapter 11 that, that if, if you ask, the Father will give you anything. So I want you to, if you're right there in your home, I want you to just say, I want to receive the Holy Ghost. And I want you to speak this. Just lift your hands to heaven and say, Lord, fill me now with the Holy Ghost, and with power, and just begin to praise him. And I want you to do this. Just begin to let whatever, uh, it was, let the Holy Ghost rise up within you. The Bible says that it's like a river. Uh, tongues will rise up within you, and you'll begin to speak and utter another language. And so let's just do that right now. Be filled, be filled, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost is not just tongues, but the Holy Ghost is power. And I want to encourage you today that now you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The Pentecost is a day of power for the New Testament church. You know, it was by divine design that God chose that day. Because you see that Pentecost is a day, it's, it's one of the feasts that everybody has to go to Jerusalem. 
if you're if you were a, a Jew, you had to go to Jerusalem to celebrate that. And so there were people from all over the known world at that time had come to Jerusalem. And it says right here in chapter 2, verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were all in one accord in one place in the upper room. And the Bible says, Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house and all that were sitting there. And there appeared unto them as like cloven tongues of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Here they were. They were all together in one accord. And suddenly, just like last night, I know at 2 o'clock in the morning, the wind was blowing really strong and really hard and really whistling. And just like that, that kind of a wind of the Spirit filled the place, and everyone was filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says they all began to speak with other tongues. And they began to speak in a heavenly language. And power was given to them. Now, the Bible talks about this. And it says right here, if you go down just a little bit further to verse 5, and they were all that were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, uh, devout men, of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and they were confounded, or they were kind of mystified or stymied because they heard every man speaking in their own language. There were probably seven or eight to ten languages from different nations, and by the Spirit of God, they, the people that were filled with the Holy Ghost were speaking as a witness by the power of God in the language of those people. Now, that's pretty awesome. Now, there's two different kinds of language. When you speak in the Holy Ghost, one, God can use you to speak in a foreign language. I've heard testimonies of ministers, and I, as a matter of fact, I know people uh, that I remember the ministers coming and telling that were missionaries, were in Africa, and they were ministering, and they couldn't speak the language. But they said that something happened to them, and they began to speak, and all of a sudden they were speaking in the language of the nation there. And it was really powerful, and they didn't know what happened. Well, I can tell you what happened. The Holy Ghost got on them, and they got filled, and they didn't even recognize it. But I'm telling you today, you can speak in other languages. I know that sometimes when I've prayed in tongues and been, been praying, and, and uh, sometimes the Bible says that you pray and you don't know exactly what to pray for, so you pray in the Holy Ghost, and the Spirit of God will lead you to pray in an utterance and, and in something that, that is only, uh, you know, the, that heaven can do. And I know that I've, I've been in, in a place, in several places, where I've heard other people speaking uh, different languages, uh, Ukraine, uh, Russian, uh, Polish, and and I've said, you know, I've, I've, I've spoken like that in prayer and didn't even realize it. And so God can do that. And then there's a heavenly language where that we pray by the Spirit. And it's a language that our, our intellect might not understand immediately. But the Bible says if you pray in the Spirit, you can also understand what you've prayed in the Spirit. So don't get, you know, uh, afraid here. The Bible says that we need to pray in tongues. We need to be filled. We need to be filled and let God begin to fill you. And as you pray in tongues, get the interpretations. That's one of the things by the Holy Ghost. He will give you the interpretation. It's important. The church was birthed in power. The church was born in power, and I'm going to tell you, when Jesus comes back, the church is going out in power. This is something God has promised. I believe that this Pentecost Sunday, we are starting a new decade. This new decade is a supernatural decade. This decade is powerful. This decade is awesome. And I want you to see that it's filled with power. And God is saying for us to be filled with the Spirit and be full of the Holy Ghost in this hour. You know, I thought about this. We've got power to change the world. 
Now, if you'll go back into the archives of our messages, on Sunday, January the 5th of this year, 2020, the Lord gave me a, a word for this year. And I really felt like this is what the Lord is saying to the church. And so I went back and, and researched that and got it. I'm going to read just the, my opening statements to you. It says, as I sought the Lord for clarity in this new year, I felt the Holy Spirit would say there would be two specific things, restoration and incredible miracles. Restoration and incredible miracles. And we talked about restoration because in Joel 2.25, the Bible says that God is going to restore unto us the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and all of the other uh, devouring insects had taken and stolen. And that's a promise that God has given us in this season and in this hour that God is going to restore unto us all that the devil has destroyed. And I know that, uh, you know, we've been going through a lot of things right now. Get ready. God's going to restore some things. The palm worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar, all of these things. And the Bible says that something that we've been doing to declare the, the word. You know, the Bible says in Job tw uh, chapter 22, verse 28, to declare a thing and it shall be established. And so we've been speaking against the sickness, the disease, and we've been speaking, uh, you know, for God uh, to restore and for things to be changed, and God has been so faithful. Now, I know that I can hear people right now saying, hey, <laughs> Pastor, I love you, <laughs> but you sure blew it on that one. And my reply is, Really? Really? No one in this church has been sick with that virus. God has blessed the people. Most of the people have kept their jobs. Most of the people are totally blessed. We've been speaking what the Word of God says. We've been declaring. We've been standing against this thing. And I say to you that we are blessed. God is going to totally restore all things, but the people in this church have made it through it and are going through it, and God has totally carried us through it. I know a lot of people that can't say that. We've had friends and people that we know that perished and died from the virus. It's unfortunate. But see, if you don't have the Word of God, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, and if you don't know what the Bible says and know where you stand and who you are, you're in danger of some things. And that's why we are, are so adamant about preaching the Word, teaching the people how to stand, how to flow in the Holy Ghost and hear what God is saying. You can avoid many horrible circumstances if you will listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Too many people are going la, la, la about their business all day long, just flitting around, doing all their stuff, and they have not a, a, a clue about what God is saying. Understand God is speaking in this hour by the Holy Spirit, and he's speaking to his prophets, and he's releasing things through his apostles, and you've got to hear them and understand what God is speaking. Can you say amen? We didn't miss it. God is destroying all the works of the a devil. You know, I want you to get this in your spirit. The Bible says that when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you are filled with, say it with me, power, miracle working power. We're filled with the same Holy Ghost that Jesus was filled with. We're filled with the same power that Jesus was filled with. We're same, filled with the same ability that Jesus was filled with. And so we need to understand that we have power, and it's time for us to rise up and walk in that power. God is our protector. In all of this, understand God is our protector. Understand that God is our strength. He's our buckler. He's our shield. He's our high tower that we run into for a time of need. God is our helper in all things. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. <laughs> you know, I know that we're all having just because, you know, we're having to do just because the government says that we have to wear the mask of fear. 
means that we're trusting in it. Folks, this represents fear. I know that we're wearing masks because the government said we have to, but this is because of fear. We know who our healer is. We know who our protector is. We know that we're filled with the Holy Ghost and power to over sickness and over all disease. This is fear. The social distancing, you know, I haven't figured this out. How can the coronavirus detect whether you're five feet away or six feet away or 10 feet away? What's the difference? Think about that. God is our source. God is our healer. God is our deliverer. We need to learn right now. It's time for us to rise up and walk. There are people everywhere that are so afraid and still asking questions about things. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to do what the Bible says. I want you to see something. Get ready for restoration. God is going to restore to the believer. To the believer, let me you know, signify that. To the believer, God is going to restore all things that the devil has destroyed, all things that the devil has tried to do. The enemy has uh, uh, tried to come at our nation. Why? To stop the voice of the church. All of this, the reason for it is because we know the word of the Lord said he's going to do incredible miracles and he's going to do great restoration in this year. And the reason for all of this is, has been to try to stop and discourage the church and to silence her voice. The reason why churches haven't been able to open is because they want to silence the voice of the church, because the church leads. The church prays for the sick. The church is the example. And they know that if the church, I'm talking about people that, you know, that are being, you know, held captive by demon spirits, They want to stop the church, but you can't stop the church. Jesus said that the gates of hell cannot come against the church. I want you to get ready for incredible miracles. I want you to believe for incredible miracles. It's time for you and I to rise up. It's time for us to begin to pray for the sick. It's time for us to begin to speak and command sickness and disease off the bodies of people and believe what God has said. He said, I filled you with power. I've given the Holy Ghost for power to be a witness. And so now it's time to rise up and be a witness on the the earth. It's time to rise up and begin to call upon heaven and lay hands on the sick and make declaration and see God move in a supernatural way. I want to challenge you. You know, we get filled with the Holy Ghost. There are, there's a one-time baptism, but there are many different infillings. And we can be filled and refilled. What we do is we get recharged. It's kind of like recharging your batteries. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 18, for us not to be drunk with wine, where is an excess, but for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to ourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, and making melody in our heart to the Lord. Amen. You see, we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And every day you can be filled. You can be refilled. We need to recharge. We need to pray in tongues. We need to get in the Spirit. And we need to sing songs and hymns and worship unto the Lord and be refilled, re-energized so that we can accomplish the things that God has given us. Every day as we give out, we need to be filled again. And I want to challenge you. We all need to take this time and be refilled so that we can go out and minister to the the, the word of God and minister healing and deliverance and del- bring the kingdom of God to people. So I want to challenge you right now. We have to begin to move out. We have to begin to step out and, ad- and administer the kingdom of God. You can do that by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I want you to understand this, that you can have that power if you're born again. And I want to ask this. There might be one listening right now and say, Pastor, I'd like to know that my sins are forgiven. I'd like to be filled with the Holy Ghost like you're talking about. Well, it's real simple. I want you to do this. I want you to put your hand on your heart and just pray this simple prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to forgive me of all my sin. Come into my life. I receive you now as my Lord 
and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you prayed that simple prayer and believed with all your heart, I assure you, according to the Word of God, Jesus Christ just forgave you of all your sins, and he has come into your life. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Just, just say, Lord, fill me by the Spirit right now and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Begin right now to pray in tongues. Just to join me right now. Just, just lay your hands on yourself. Say, as we did at the beginning of the service, Lord, fill me right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Now just practice that. Do that every single day. God will keep you filled. Amen. Now we're going to take this moment. We've, we've asked folks to uh, observe at home with us uh, communion. And so we're going to ask you right now to go ahead and get the elements of communion. And uh, we're going to do this. Uh, if you go ahead and get your bread and juice or, or whatever. Jesus said when they were at the feast, the Last Supper, Jesus said, as he broke the bread and blessed it, he said, take, eat, and this is my body which is given for you. And then he took the cup and he, and he blessed it and said, take and drink ye all of it, for this is uh, of my blood that is shed for the remission of sin. The Bible talks about without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remedy. There is no cure. Jesus' blood is the only blood. And Jesus' blood is the a one that, that sets us free. Jesus is the one that sets us free. And so I want to encourage you right now. As we eat this bread... And drink of this cup. If you need healing in your body, you can receive that. And so I want to encourage you right now. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you right now. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Someone is bringing me one. I'll lead you in this. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want you to take right now, we'll receive the bread and thank God for it. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. We receive it now. Jesus said, take and drink the cup. Drink all of it. For this is my blood that was shed for you. So, Lord, we thank you for the shedding of your blood. We thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for taking away our sin. We receive this now in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. And we magnify you for all that you're doing. Thank you for today. Thank you for filling people and, and, and causing people to receive their miracle. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for encouraging us. And we glorify you and give you the praise. Amen. Today we're going to give you an opportunity to sow and plant. Folks have been asking, you know, um, how they can do that. And, and so if you'd like to give online, you can go to our webpage, jubileefamilyoc.com. At the end of the service, we'll put the uh, uh, banner up, and you can get the address. And uh, uh, go to our website, go to the Connect button at the top, and then when you connect there, go to the lower right corner. There's a place that says that you can donate. It's a very secure site, and you can donate online. If you'd like to pay by check or money order, please, no cash, you can send it to Jubilee. That's all you need to put is Jubilee. Just write that on the check or money order, Jubilee, and send it to 670 Prospect Avenue, West Springfield, Mass., 01089. 
And today, we're going to do something. This is uh, uh, pretty much uh, uh, what our church does. And so if you'd like to be involved, we encourage you to do so. Three times a year, there was a special offering the Jewish people took up. Now, they took up tithes and offerings regularly every week. But there were three special seasons and feasts that they brought special offerings. One, uh, one was the first fruit, uh, which is the uh, New Year and the Feast of Tabernacles, and also at Passover, which we celebrate Easter. And the third one is on Pentecost, which is the Feast of Weeks. And what we're doing uh, for our church, for this special offering today, we're, uh, we're sowing a seed towards what we are calling the Slay the Giant Fund. You might say, well, what's the Slay the Giant Fund? It's our mortgage. And we've just about got the thing paid off, and so we're so excited, and we're believing God this year. It's going to be totally eradicated, and that God has done it. So if you want to sow a special seed, a Pentecost, you know, a seed time and harvest seed, you may do so. And you can just, if you want to designate it for uh, Slay the Giant, that's good. Uh, if it's tithes or offerings, just uh, designate it however it is. But I want to pray for you today as we receive these offerings. Offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for blessing every person within the hearing of my voice. I thank you right now for every offering, every tithe, every almsgiving, every building fund, every slay the giant fund. Whatever the offering, the tithe, or whatever it is, Lord, I speak over that seed, and we call it good. We call it blessed in Jesus' name. We declare that this church, this ministry is good ground, and we thank you, Lord, that we're reaching multitudes of people, not only in our city, but even around the world through missionaries and through people and ministries we help support. So, Father, I thank you for what we're being able to do. Bless the people as they give, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. I call them blessed in the name of the Lord. Amen. Well, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to join us today. I want to encourage you to join us on Thursday. We'll have another uh, good word from the Lord. And I, I just want to encourage you, be blessed. Understand that you've got power. You've got authority. Take that authority. Use that authority. Let's bring the kingdom of God to the world. So I call you blessed in the name of the Lord. Amen. Have a wonderful day.